any prospect or over the last two years quote unquote rookie i don't think that the stickers are going to hold up as much Welcome back, everyone, to the Slab Stocks podcast. My name is Aaron, your host. This is Slab Stocks FC. We're back with another discussion. I'm joined here today by my buddy, Tyler Schmidt, who is Gary Vaynerchuk's assistant, host of Card Talk, one of the hosts of Card Talk, the best podcast out there outside of Slab Stocks. <laughs> Just messing around. I like, but, it, uh, I like it. I like it. Definitely go t- check out Card Talk with Tyler, Ryan, Card Collector 2, and Lou Janu. Uh, they run an awesome podcast and have so much information out there for you to gather every single week, uh, Wednesday podcast. And we're here to talk about soccer today, though. Tyler's a huge footy fan. He's the one that got me into it a year ago at the National. So if you watched uh, the intro video for Slab Sucks FC, this is the man, Tyler, who started teaching me about it. So thanks so much for joining me. We're just going to hop right in and talk about soccer, all the different cards and stickers out there. What are you doing in the soccer space? What have you been doing for the past year? And you know, cards versus stickers, where do you sit? Do you do both? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely both. And before we go into it, I uh I think for my entire life I'll I'll have fond memories of like that first time we met in Chicago. Yeah. As much as like you sit there and say whatever got you into soccer, like the uh the larger macro of this whole hobby and everything, you know, one of the first people that I actually built a relationship with that was like on the inside and so and even just with the podcast stuff keep doing your thing you know with the what's happened in the last year and all the attention and uh just uh, i appreciate how you approach everything and so keep keep paving the way for people keep doing your thing and appreciate you having me the soccer the soccer thing was literally like how i tricked myself to get into everything because I had a lot of passion for the sport. And when things were first coming along, Gary was really getting into it. I was starting to spend time on it. I had to like step back and, and like, like, okay, where's my spot? Where's the opportunity? Whenever I, and, and I think this has a parallel to soccer in general, whenever I try to look at things, I sit back and say, where can I have the most impact or where does the most opportunity lie for me to either get ahead or learn the most or um, be able to bring the most value versus like crowded spaces. Um, And so I went, I went, I went soccer and first plays I made was Mbappe and just getting to understand that scene and, uh, and still very much so um, a fan of his and long on his, I I was buying, I've been 2018 world cup on amazon for like <laughs> pennies bro yeah <laughs> like yeah. cheap just on some fun like ripping it but didn't even realize what was going on i've ripped so much 2018 prism over the last two years um and then to see what's happened to it now has been fun to answer the immediate question what have i been doing in soccer um I- i've been you know i think not as much prospecting uh, i see a lot of parallels between mlb prospecting and now soccer prospecting because of the not necessarily college nature like true american sport in that regard where you can be 16 17 18 be at a small club almost like a minor league club type uh beat and have your you know big clubs have eyes on you or ties or you're making ways on the u21 international team u19 international team stuff like that so i've been always been paying attention on that side um obviously mason greenwood but guys like phil foden you know i think it, there's more prospecting there than even i think there's a lower level that's happening whether it's fati i guess you could put him up there um but there's a lot of guys in the premier league that have played put up in time uh that are 20 21 22 that i think we'll get some action with the increased visibility in premier yeah. um to the question of stickers non-stickers which is a real thing uh that's going on i think if you look at greenwood because i i definitely picked up a bunch of greenwood stickers early on mm-hmm. i don't believe that the the modern the the newer soccer meaning any prospect or over the last two years quote unquote rookie i don't think that the stickers are going to hold up as much um yeah because of the innovation in product offerings from panini and tops with their licensing Mm -hmm. um 
but I do think if you look back to, um, you know, maybe pre 2017 or pre 2016, like Christian Pulisic, that those, that Don Russ stuff, 2016, I think 2016 is kind of like a, a pivot point, but I don't think Greenwood sticker is going to carry much juice after I just have been paying attention to market wise. I think the Chronicles, um, will, will take off a little bit more, um, that court Kings card, what have you, but on the more vintage side, if you want to call it vintage, um, yeah. like I, I do believe in Bappe's, um, uh, sticker from a population, but then again, prism is going to carry more. I think Rashford Sterling, some of those guys on the sticker side, uh, will emerge, but anything new, I, I don't think the market's going to hold on to the sticker. Yeah. And looking much. at like, you have 2008 Panini sticker World Cup of a uh, Messi PSA 10. That's like a plus five, $500 plus card. Yeah. Uh, well, sticker, obviously not a card. So yep. stuff like that pre 2010, I'm sure stickers. And then those uh, offshoot Panini sets like World Cup, how they were international released and not American released, like now the Prism is. Yeah. Um, those cards seem to be the ones that will hold up more for the international releases versus the newer ones. And actually, this is funny. I have something sitting next to me right here. Yeah. I'm going to show you. Yeah. So, I've got this Jaden Sancho. This is like the WCCF, yep. um, the mini or whatever. Yeah. It, it's out of Japan or something or Asia. I'm not exactly sure oh, yeah. where this card's even from. PSA yep. 8. So I bought two of these a long time uh -huh. ago, um, around $40 each. And this was when Topps Chrome rookies were probably like $8, $10, $6, six to $10. And I had a ton of those too. Um, I ended up keeping the WCCF because they're just not valuable. They didn't gain yeah. any traction. This was before both his optic and his tops chrome. Yeah. But it, it, it has no traction. So I think yeah. to what you're saying, the players that are new coming out have rookie logos, have rated rookie logos, all that stuff. There are people who are just going to be looking at the modern market. Totally. And um, one of the biggest bets, I, I made a bigger bet on Joao Felix than I did on Mbappe. And I was like, I was dead in on, on Mbappe. I mean, like three dollar base raw yeah. national. You remember? That's I what remember, I, was yeah, I did the same thing. <laughs> like and and so I, uh, it's uh, Joao Felix again, same deal. But I, I bought a ton of sticker and a ton of um, of his top scrum there. They've done well, but I think overall with the soccer stuff, and if you're listening, m probably more than anywhere i think there's one opportunity and if you're willing to put in the work and more ability higher risk higher reward and so i would say if you are coming into it be willing to get educated on twofold one the game because there's so many it, it uh, football, you know, uh, international football, global football is so different than any other sport. I'd say both from the amount of leagues that matter in basketball. There's one league that matters in football. Mm -hmm. There's one league that matters in soccer. There's many leagues that matters. Then there's international. So you've got guys wearing two different kits as well. Like, what do you want? Who, you know, do you want Messi in an Argentina kit? Do you want Messi in a, uh, Barcelona kit? Do you want Mbappe yeah. in his Paris kit or his Monaco kit for that matter, or in his French kit when he won the World Cup, Pogba, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, and then product to the point of sticker versus card, massive debate, but also Champions League versus non-Champions League, Tops, Panini, which way are you going? Um, and so I, I think that that provides the opportunity and ability to, if you're really doing the homework, understand where the demand is. I also think that the way that coronavirus has now set up the schedule and pushed stuff back and unprecedented in the sense of the next 24 months, the attention that's going to be on, on global football um, with the fact of you got Euro cup next summer, followed by world cup, you've got champions league. And what that's going to do is allow incredible depth of these clubs because Unlike most sports, there's so much management that's going in. NFL, you're going to see it more, expanded rosters. But essentially, these guys, the the running nature and the work and that they put on these bodies, the any nick, you know, can take you out for two weeks. And it's going to allow a lot of opportunity. And before we hopped on investing versus gambling, you're going to mm -hmm. see a lot of a la Dan daily fantasy sport, like quick trades, 
it happens in Premier League. Guy goes on a three week tear. Um, who was my guy? Uh, T- uh, Pookie from Norwich, like yeah. started off last Premier League season, super hot. I think that'll provide a, a big white space. But at the same time, you know, that was like a four week blackout by him. And then didn't have much action towards the end of the season. You're going to see a lot of that over the next 24 months. So I think if you're willing to come in to soccer and even a lot of people are coming in and have no idea about any of it, but just see it as an investing opportunity, realize that it's, you're more gambling. It's like, if you decide, if you've never bet on football in your life and you're going to walk into this year and say, I'm going to put $2,000 to betting NFL, like, you're gambling and the chances are you're going to lose. That's just yep. how the market's made up. Um, but I think there's a, a big opportunity also high risk, high reward to do really, really, really well, but it's not as defined. There's more higher amount of downside in terms of just listening to someone like you or me or whoever that's out there saying, do this or do that. Um, because one, it's so new and things are going to be so volatile. Um, so I would just, I would just say, if you're going to go there, be willing to die on your own sword, be willing to make your put up together your own investment strategy and realize, unless we're talking about the the goats, Messi, Ronaldo, guys that are, you know, not playing anymore, or even as Zlatan, who's towards the end of his career, um, there's so much unknown. And I don't know much, nor have I ever bought like Bowman baseball, like you know, double A, triple A guys, but I'd imagine same deal. There's a whole pocket of people that get into that. Yeah. But your hit rates, like, you know, there's guys Buxton, like, you know, that are like stars before they have even like played in a real meaningful way. That is the same deal in soccer. And so just be aware of it. Yeah. It just opens you up to a lot more susceptibility of players not making it cards are going down in value but also that like we just talked about there's pros and cons to everything you can mm-hmm. hit on a guy huge and then you're really really in the green and then some guys you know you might not do as well it's just a long-term thing where you have to compare all your investments to each other how are they doing are you up in the long run and really quick i, I had a thought come into my mind i really want you to hit on this because i've been having this debate in my mind and others on instagram as well is looking at the international scene for cards looking Mm -hmm. at Europe, looking at the UK, looking at these different places that may have an opportunity for Panini and Tops to get into there with normal American card releases. Do you think Mm -hmm. in the next year, two years, will we start to see soccer cards, not stickers, become a bigger thing in Europe? Or are we going to continue to see this divide with soccer cards in America versus soccer stickers and, you know, some cards, the thinner ones like the Mega Cracks and stuff? abroad mm-hmm. still or are we going to see a, a, a merge of this to where we can expect european demand to come to cards or should people in america who are investing play both sides of it and get into stickers get into these international releases while also doing american releases because of how big prism and tops chrome brands are in america yeah yeah i think you'll you'll definitely see um kind of this youngerish generation of uh soccer fans like in the uk specifically there is the demand just talking to people over in the uk uh i think you'll see it but at the same time i think that there's more passion for the actual clubs and there's a bigger propensity of gambling on uh, like just games in the Mm -hmm. uk gambling culture in the uk is much bigger than it is in the u.s so one, I think that that provides a lot of opportunity because like we're saying, a lot of the new entrants into the hobby are like daily fantasy guys or guys that spend a lot of time understanding lines and movement in lines. That happens w- way more in the UK, especially around you know proper football in the Premier League. So I mm-hmm. do think that you'll see this understanding of the market. But with technology, I think that there will be more UK people playing on the American product than the distributors pumping product into those hands. Um, now I don't, again, where the, where the sticker thing goes, the print runs are so huge. And one thing I also want to talk to you a little bit about is like with, with soccer exploding and something to look out for is like the low pop of graded soccer cards 
and the, the increase in like sticker value and sales value of people saying like, this is a one of one Sancho, like PSA 10. And it's like, well, you know, it's not like it's one of one because they're grading, they're gemming on them at like 1%. It's because three years ago, no one was submitting soccer cards to right. PSA. And I mean, then they're in are commanding like a thousand percent, you know, uptick on, on sales and people are yeah. coming in and getting burned because they're newer and being like, oh, this is one of one. And then you equate it and you're like, well, there's 12,000 Lucas. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, it's a newer thing. So I would just say be, be thoughtful about that. I think it's much more of a raw game than even graded. Yeah. And I mean, looking at this one, the, the Sancho, this one can't be more than a pop, like 30 or something in general, every yeah. single grade. And this card, you know, it, it's $40 raw, about 20, $40 raw could probably easy get a hundred plus for an eight, you know, like, yeah. and that's just, that's an eight. Obviously yeah, now these cards have really bad chipping on the back black border, not really yep. taking care of another thing to look out for. If you're talking about these international releases with the mega cracks of Ronaldo and Messi over and abroad in 2004, um, those are super susceptible to chipping and corner damage. And you see sevens out there to commanding massive premiums because the raw ones now are all bent in half or yep. destroyed. Yep. Yeah. And that's where I think the, uh, on st soccer graded stickers, anything newer, there's so much, but you, to your point of Oh four versus 2017, 13 years of like those cards, either like being passed around or seen as like nothing or just like random laying in your household or your attic brings the propensity down of increase in demand in Bappe. I can only imagine how many 2018 prisms are sitting at PSA waited to be great. Yeah. Right now. So many, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why I go to the sticker way more as the rookie, because there's not as many in good condition that people are able to send in that, that pop is not going to let, rise. Let, at that let's rate. think about, let's think about too, the, the international aspect of actually grading. It's difficult yeah. for people international to actually get their cards graded. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to know about grading first off, and then you also have to know of people that can send them in for you because you can't send a submission to PSA from international. I'm yep. pretty sure they don't accept international submissions. So you'd have to know someone in the U.S. that can get your cards, send them in for grading, send them back. There's just so many more barriers to entry, which is why you see these international cards graded less, also presenting big opportunity for Americans to grade them and sell them. Totally. One thing we were going to touch on um, before we had to jump and was a conversation coming in that I was like, yeah, I'm excited to have this is, you know, because there's so much new happening in this space. It's not like baseball where you there's a real understanding of like the product release cycle, where to find the legends, what their card is, all that in terms of understanding if I'm not that big of a, a footy fan and you know more into this in terms of look like yeah this is i'm taking this as a job as an investment i'm putting a strategy together how do i get educated what i would say is google like can be your best friend in terms of lists understand this right like being able to google okay who the top 100 soccer players of all time spend time there the top uh most famous soccer clubs of all time um uh, the most dominant in terms of Champions League, the most, the who, what are the international rankings right now? Knowing that we're about to head into uh, Euro Cup and World Cup, just get an understanding of the landscape, get knowledgeable before we even start to talk about cards. Get mm -hmm. an understanding because again, it's all a supply and demand game, right? Yeah. If you understand where demand is currently and or where it's going to go, meaning. If Belgium wins the Euro Cup 2020, like KDB is a much better buy, then it's like, okay, well, now I know that Belgium's actually the number one rated international team in the world. So their odds to win that are like right there with France, one and one, compared to, say, um, I don't know, uh, Croatia again or something like that, where Modric, yeah. like, you're probably not going to see that. Or, yeah, really, really quick. Yeah. What, when, you, when you look at that, you can then look at, okay, well, do I buy. Kevin De Bruyne 2016 Prism Euro in Belgium, or do I go and grab some optic in his Man City or 2017 Tops Chrome? It's understanding where the soccer landscape is first, then looking from there because there's so much you know in depth That's things exactly when it comes to right. soccer card. So the way that I, I think about those things is like work down the funnel, 
right? Like mm -hmm. start very big in your research and then try and just get into a rabbit hole until you understand like, okay, cool. I'm going to sit back. Um, uh, exactly. Belgium. I'm going to uh, hypothesize that Belgium has two massive international uh, trophies to compete for over the next 24 months. Who are their stars? KDB. Oh, mm -hmm. KDB also plays for Man City and potentially could win two Prem Leagues and two Champions Leagues, and they might get messy in the next 24 months. Cool. Now I'm focused on that. Then it's like, let me understand the product offering. Boom. Go into rookie stickers, Man City product, Belgium product. Boom. Let me now understand like the, the population reports. Let me go check out his Instagram. How big is his Instagram comparatively to someone else? Okay. Now let me get deep on the Belgium squad. Who are some of the young guns coming up who might, you know, read a couple of random blogs. This is it. Then you get to start an understanding of like, okay, I know what's going on with the Belgium team. I understand the products. I understand. Now you can take all that data and then say, I'm going to do the same for the Netherlands. And then you can start to draw correlations. And then when you see, you know, like the Netherlands center midfielder, who's more of a prospect trading at, 70 percent it's like well, de bruyne is underpriced or vice versa you mm -hmm. know someone's trading at five percent of what it is and it's like you can see room because over time markets work their well their selves out for efficiencies yeah. um and so i think just blocks of research to deploy is an important thing yeah that was wonderful i think anyone that just watch this podcast or listen to this podcast should take that and start applying it anywhere they can in the soccer market because there is loads of research you need to do beforehand. And Tyler, if, if that's all you got, I'm good on it. I think this was yeah. awesome getting this discussion Hell yeah. out there. Hell yeah. And uh, we'd love to come on again. I know we had to be yeah. be a little rushed here, but let's uh, let's keep talking. Even if we want yeah, to sure. just, like, wrap something later this weekend, whatever to add as a part two, I'd love yeah. to. I wish I didn't yeah. have to jump right now, but we could go for an hour. No worries. Yeah, I know. We could literally sit here and talk so much soccer. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right well, thanks, and everyone, for watching. Back. Premier League's already back next Saturday. Eight yeah. Days. Dude, so. it's coming. New season. Oh, yeah. Hell everyone, yeah. go go follow Tyler on Instagram. Go follow Card Talk Pod on Instagram and listen to their podcast. It's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, anywhere you listen to podcasts. A really great show to listen to and gain knowledge. Thank you for everyone for listening to this episode of Slabstocks FC, and we'll see you guys next week.